And thanks so much for tuning in to Morning Live. Now, given the country's worsening economic situation, citizens as well as government need to implement belt tightening measures. The Department of Public Service and Administration is negotiating with labor unions to try and persuade as some workers at least who can take early retirement to do so. And last year, the Auditor General Kimi Makwetu revealed that fruitless and wasteful expenditure by government departments had grown by 200%. And Public Service and Administration Minister Senzo Mkunu is here to discuss these and other matters related to his portfolio in government. Thank you so much. Good to see you, Minister. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you to uh, um, uh, the followers of uh, SAPC. Um, Minister, perhaps uh, just to start by, you know, how you've settled into this department, because it is... Uh, quite a difficult one it can be given all the issues that you need to deal with at public service and administration well I would say it was was settling well um, but uh, it's not a comfortable position in the sense of uh, challenges that are there and they uh, were appointed to deal with those challenges exactly so we're, we're, we're not complaining we're fine so one of the things uh, that is mentioned is that uh, according to uh, the department the wage bill is quite high, uh, but the workforce has gone down. So a bit of a conundrum there. Uh, what's the cause of this? Well, we um, we are taking an approach that say we possibly have a problem of a high cost, high cost of doing public administration in the Republic of South Africa. You then have to search for drivers thereof. If it is wage bill, if it is um, uh, litigation, if it is um, uh, um, appointing people uh, uh, not to right positions and so on. But we're taking a systematic approach uh, as it is uh, to say the problem that is facing us is that of possible high cost of administration. And that is what we are looking at, rather than simply saying, no, this is uh, the wish bill. Of course, there are indications. In our studies uh, that we uh, have uh, started right now, we come across uh, a number of things, although not, not completed at the moment, but uh, possibilities uh, uh, or we are, we are saying what should be an ideal um, cost of doing public administration vis-a-vis -vis your GDP. And we compare ourselves with the other, other countries too. What is the number of public servants per citizen? And we compare ourselves with uh, other countries. We are looking at the shape of uh, public, uh, uh, our public uh, service uh, specifically. Is it big headed? Is it, does it have big feet and small head or vice versa? Meaning if it has a big head, it would be like most of your senior uh, or, or most of your public servants are rather loaded up rather than being loaded down and so on. But we, we are aware that uh, uh, of almost three quarters of our public servants are police, uh, the nurses, and, and teachers. And you, you won't go to any school and, and find that they are bloated. You won't go to any hospital and find that they are... It, rather, you'll find it the, 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 the other way around. Shortage of doctors, shortage of nurses, shortage of this and that. And that. So surely the answer is going to come once we complete uh, all these processes that I'm talking about which is nearing the end. So that we are able to talk authoritatively in terms of where the problem is. But we are aware that um, whatever the problem is and whatever it is, yes, the wage uh, um, isn't uh, talking to our GDP and the wage is uh, not necessarily uh, uh, talking to our circumstances in terms of uh, the needs where we need public service mm -hmm. most and so on. So these are all the things that we need to uh, correct and correct now. Indeed, because they, they are very yeah. concerning. Yes. Uh, but also, what percentage of your budget goes to salaries? 
Well, uh, it's difficult to say uh, at the moment because uh, you, one, what we've done is uh, you are aware that we are reconfiguring a, a government at the moment. But if you <coughs> re reconfiguring government, meaning we, we now have lesser uh, departments and the number of uh, 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 public servants who have been employed in, 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 the, in the last term who are still in the public service. Uh, and uh, via our discussions, uh, which we call ANMOC, we are uh, discussing with the unions uh, on the best mechanisms to um, uh, trim uh, public services and, and size it correctly uh, uh, in line with uh, our reconfiguration. But um, um, if you go to any, any, any department, uh, you, would, you would rather find sometimes it's 80% of uh, their allocation per financial year uh, is salaries. Uh, sometimes uh, as high as 85%, and, and, and that would be worrying because it means that you, you remain with 15% uh, only to, to do uh, service delivery. And these are all the things that are concerning us. So. And, and, and looking at these uh, disparities a little closer and digging down, you also have uh, the issue of wasteful expenditure. And um, when one thinks of the public service, one of the things that immediately comes to mind is people who are on suspension for long, long extended periods of time on full pay. Surely yes. this is something that the department should be seized with. Yes, we, 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 we are dealing with uh, that matter. I know for a fact that uh, right now uh, we have uh, about 29 people who are on suspension and are going through uh, different, uh, at different levels uh, of uh, disciplinary processes. But what is concerning is that one of those people in one of the provinces uh, is now on the third year of uh, that process. Uh, another is doing uh, uh, almost the second year. Now, we, we are moving towards a, 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 a situation where we're going to be setting um, uh, periods, specific periods for disciplinary processes, failing which we then intervene directly to say, we see that uh, this disciplinary case has gone this far, what are the reasons, and then we intervene. Uh, but for now, um, uh, yes, uh, that's a concern. The other concern, of course, is uh, rentals. Uh, I'm, I'm aware that uh, one of the departments uh, uh, in one province uh, is, uh, is costing government upwards of 220-something um, thousand rent per month. But the building is said to be uh, not safe uh, to be occupied and so on. So there would be many such buildings that government is paying for in the name of public administration in the republic that we shouldn't be paying. And these are all the things that we need to do uh, in terms of overhauling uh, together with all our colleagues in all spheres of government. And that is why we are broadening the issue uh, to saying we rather talk about cost of doing public administration in the Republic rather than narrowing down to just the wage bill, which is just one of the, of the aspects that are a worry and a concern to us. But we're not going to leave anything uh, untouched. We are going all over, dealing with uh, scrutinizing each and every aspect. So I take it you will be doing um, some assessment, some investigation in that regard as well, because ever so often you'll see media reports of um, a building that was procured but is not being occupied and yes. rental being paid elsewhere. Surely that, that it cannot continue. It's a major concern. It can con continue. It's not going to be part of uh, the sixth administration. We have spelled it out to the nation and to ourselves and to all our colleagues and, uh, and uh, uh, public servants and the people of South Africa that in the sixth administration we are about uh, a developmental state and a developmental state has its own imperatives. One of those is you need to um, run administration uh, with uh, a, a, a very, very um, a serious uh, uh, attention to effectiveness and to efficiencies and to professionalism. 
surely hiring a building and paying high costs and leaving it uh, like that is directly wasteful and it's unacceptable and it's one of the things that we'll be dealing with. And we are aware of, our, of uh, the state of economy of, of our country. It doesn't even allow that. Even if it allowed, it wouldn't be a good way of running government. We are about good governance and we want to improve on that and surely uh, doing those things, those sort of things, belongs to the past, it can't be allowed now. So it, it, it would seem as though this has become endemic, if not systemic at this point, where people have been doing this and, uh, you know, it's just been going on and on forever and a day. How are you going to change it? How are you going to uproot that culture? Well, firstly, talking about culture, uh, uh, a particular culture takes time to, to set in and uh, to change things around uh, uh, takes a little while. But uh, we have said to ourselves, we just have to be impatient. And, and we've started. Um, you know, there are, there are, there are people who will, um, uh, in public service, you'll get submissions saying, uh, we want to extend the employment of so-and-so. It's not part of the structure that has been adopted and is functional at the moment, just an extra and so on, an extra person and so on. Now, those things uh, we just don't allow. Because if we allow one, there will be the second one, and there will be a third one. So it, it's all over. Um, I'm not saying that this is uh, um, uh, just uh, s something that uh, uh, is in every department, in every sphere of government. But I'm saying there, there, are, uh, there are signs that uh, um, uh, such incidents do occur. And one incident uh, where it, it occurs, it, it's a problem. So we're going to be systematically uh, uh, removing uh, those, those practices and in the, in the process changing things around via meetings of... Uh, the president has already uh, addressed uh, DGs, all DGs at national level. We will follow uh, with uh, the same uh, meeting uh, to deal with specific matters that would have been uh, part of the practice in the past, pr part of the p practices in the past, which you are now saying, as an accounting officer, these are the things that are a no, no, no. Uh, these are the, so, so we, we, we are going right into, into those things. So the president returned the now infamous ministerial handbook for further trimming. Yes. And, and, and reading through that ministerial handbook, it makes for very interesting reading. If one looks at the perks that accrue to our elected representatives and, 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 and just running through, you know, some of it, if, if, if you look yeah. at, um, you know, the vehicle issue, this has been contentious for a very long time yes. uh, because a minister, for example, um, and those who by the ministerial handbook, that would be yeah. ministers, deputy ministers, um, your MECs, and also your premiers. Um, it, it, of course, this would apply to ministers, of course, then um, at the national level. They are allowed a vehicle in each seat of office. And again, this, this has been, as you know, always a contentious matter in terms of the cost of this and, 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 and why it is necessary. Then there are other issues. Um, you know, you've got... One of the ones that stuck in my throat was the fact that we have to pay for cleaning materials. And you think, when a minister goes and buys groceries, don't they put in the cleaning materials for their homes? Isn't it enough that the taxpayer is already footing the bill uh, for uh, the domestic worker that cleans your house? Now we have to pay for your cleaning materials as well. Other things as well, like flights. Um, uh, and, and, and here... This is quite something. Um, if you look at former ministers, and I'm not even talking about current ministers, former ministers, they are allowed 48 single domestic flights business class per annum. Their spouses, 24 single business class flights per annum. Why? Well, as you started very well, saying that um, the ministerial handbook is under review, that is a fact, that is correct. Taking consideration, uh, taking into consideration the very situation that we are in, and also aligning ourselves with um, uh, the experiences of uh, the South African public in, in general, 
ministers don't live in another world, uh, nor do embassies and, and even the president. And so the president, out of concern, said, look, <clears throat> uh, this ministerial handbook has been in the making for the last nine years and so on and so on. We, get caught up, we got caught up with um, the situation of a new government and then we say there must be something that is a, uh, that they, they, that's a, a general guide. But then, <clears throat> having started, let us uh, then review. We are advanced, as we talk to you now, in terms of uh, the review. Uh, you would recall, it's uh, uh, Minister of Finance, Public Works and Infrastructure and myself who are, who are charged with this responsibility. The examples that you are, that you are making, yes, you, you, you would need uh, two vehicles, uh, uh, one in Pretoria, one in Cape Town, because of uh, the two uh, seats that we have, one for the legislature, one for the executive, because you can't fly cars and drive cars all I the time. I think it's more the cost. But the main thing, yes, it is the upper limit of uh, such cars uh, that the minister of finance is in charge of, and the president has referred that back to, uh, to us specifically to say, what would be the upper limit? What, if, if you use your own car, what would be the, uh, uh, the, 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 the tariff uh, and, and so on. Uh, look at uh, um, security, look at these things that you are talking about, cleaning material. Of course, we, 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 while doing these things, you, you, you say, uh, as a starting point, you get a call yourself uh, that you, you are being appointed uh, and, and, you, uh, and, and you are now minister. Where are you? You are somewhere in um, in in in, in Freiburg, uh, in the northwest. Now you leave your home with uh, everything there. You have to come to uh, Pretoria. Surely it's uh, it, 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 it well. It's a, it's a normal thing in the sense that somebody else uh, who would be looking for work would go through the same process. But what I'm saying is that while we do this review. We take that into consideration that you would have had uh, somebody uh, maybe assisting in your, in your family there. You have to have another, another one here and then and so on. So we, 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 we're looking at the situation comprehensively to cater for such uh, uh, variations and problems and so on. Wouldn't but, you want to bring the public into that review process? But, but Wouldn't you like the public to comment on this review of the ministerial handbook? Because some of the things that are allowed really are very interesting. Yes, uh, and, 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 and we are going to be um, uh, judging from the areas that we, we are touching in because we are a team. Uh, the areas that we've touched on already is going to be uh, quite an interesting um, reviewed ministerial handbook. And I do want to say uh, to all our colleagues, uh, we have to be uh, quite ready uh, to uh, make a shift in line with uh, the um, perceptions. We shouldn't be seen to be... Uh, uh, in some kind of uh, unnecessary luxury, while while at the same time we would be saying, well, let's have, let's let's allow basics so that uh, ministers uh, are able to function uh, as effectively as they could without having to, you know, worry about this and that. Yeah. Minister, appreciate your time this morning and the engagement. Uh, Public Service and Administration Minister Senzo Mkunu uh, here to discuss uh, with us, amongst other matters, uh, those related to uh, the uh, labor and, of course, also uh, the issues beset uh, in his department and also the ministerial handbook. Let's take a break. Well, in fact, we're going to lose. <laughs>